What's going on, guys? Philip at Trade Genius. I wanted to go over this article discussing the class action lawsuit against Tether and Bitfinex of market manipulation. So we're going to dive into this article and it kind of and talk about the implications for the price of Bitcoin. We'll look at a couple charts as well. We'll look at the Tether cap and we'll also look at how the pricing on Tethers can affect the price of Bitcoin. All right, so let's dive into this video. Genius. All right, guys. So I wanted to cover this. Uh, there have been some questions on it. So basically, a New York-based legal firm has filed a lawsuit against Tether and Bitfinex. Actually, this team is the one who sued Craig Wright. He's the one that claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto, although most people don't believe that. And they uh, successfully sued him for the plaintiff, uh, David Kleiman, uh, who alleges that he holds a ton of Bitcoin that should be rightfully his. So the same team, they're going after Tether and Bitfinex for creating the largest bubble in history. Uh, primarily accomplished a sophisticated scheme involving part fraud, part pump and dump, and part money laundering. So if you recall, we've had a couple times now where there's been a Tether scare and questions of whether or not there's actually dollars backing the stable coin. Uh, there should be. That's the whole point of a stable coin is that if you have a dollar of actual money, there should be one stable coin token representing that dollar in the stable coin treasury. Uh, and then stable coins are much easier to move around to the different exchanges than uh, dollars. Uh, so the uh, law firm argues that Tether's claim of backing the number of its tokens by equal amounts of United States dollar was a lie. They issued extraordinary amounts of unbacked USDT to manipulate cryptocurrency prices. Bitfinex and Tether had the power to, and did, manipulate the market on an unprecedented scale to profit from boom and bust cycles they created. Now, Tether and Bitfinex, okay, so they're same same entities are behind the exchange Bitfinex and the Tether stablecoins. Um, they said it's baseless accusations, as they have in the previous occasions when their uh, integrity has come into question. They will vigorously defend themselves if lawyers use the source to launch a lawsuit. As I've said all along with Tethers, it, they just need to have a third party audit and this would basically settle any questions. Now, since the last uh, investigation from the New York Attorney General, they did basically reveal that there isn't exactly a one-to-one -one backing for Tethers, that some of its money, some of its shares of you know the company basically. So it's not one to one dollars as it should be. So you kind of got like a partial backing in that regard. Uh, and the market seemed to have accepted that, you know. Now what can happen is if people start freaking out and getting out of tether, there's a little bit of a misconception on what can happen. So I wanted to kind of go over that. This is a cap market cap chart. So orange line is tethers. And then this turquoise color line is the actual stablecoin index because now instead of just Tethers, which was the only stablecoin there for a while, you now have a true USD, Gemini USD, among others. So all the stablecoins create this cap. And as you can see, they more or less move along together. And as you can see recently, it's been pretty stable. So it not seen any kind of exodus out of that. Now, where you will notice... Uh, problems with Tether is when you start looking at the price of Tether in terms of dollars and also the price of Bitcoin in Tethers versus USD real dollars. And so to do that, you can look up USDT, USD in TradingView, and that's going to bring up Kraken's exchange. Kraken is a US exchange. You can actually buy Tethers with your dollars. But when periods, when there's periods of panic, you'll see where People will dump their tethers. They don't care. They just went out. And on this spike back in October 2018, which was the last you know tether episode where there was some issues, it dumped down to 85 cents on the dollar. So what that ends up doing is that creates a big premium for the price of Bitcoin on tether denominated exchanges. And your biggest one is going to be Bitfinex. So what we have here is an overlay of Bitfinex onto the Coinbase chart. And so these high low close bars that are on top of these candles, this represents Bitfinex pricing. So when this happened, you can see that the high of the day on Bitfinex was $6,810. I'm sorry, the high of the day on Bit, uh, Coinbase was $6,810 and the high on Bitfinex was $7,000, almost $7,800. So you almost had a, like a $1,000 premium on the price of Bitcoin. And then the price on Bitfinex stayed elevated for quite a while 
over the price of USD denominated exchanges. And then uh, as time went on, things kind of settled down. And as we headed into June, uh, then we started to see um, price more in line one-to-one -one with US dollar denominated pricing. So one thing to look for with Tether, if there's issues with Tether, is if the Bitfinex price is starting to trade at a premium. Now right now it's at 86.69, uh, so and the uh, Coinbase is at 86.56. There's like a $10 premium, not much. That's within the normal variance. Uh, and then if we look at the price of Tether, very stable. So there's no panic yet. But again, if there is a panic, you're going to see the price of Tether dump. You're going to see Tether denominated exchanges consistently be priced higher than USD denominated exchanges. And that's really going to be the implication. I mean, if there was serious amounts of money printing and they were just printing tethers out of thin air and buying Bitcoin, then the guys that were behind that were getting Bitcoin for cheap, right? Because they were just printing up tethers. There was, you know, it was just like the Federal Reserve printing up notes. And those guys will have a lot of Bitcoin in their possession that uh, they probably shouldn't have had as many. Now, is that going to like really affect the price of Bitcoin and dump it? Um, I'm going to say not necessarily. You know, historically with tethers, if anything, all you see is big price jumps and discrepancies with the tether backed exchanges. But at the end of the day, if people are going to get out of tether, they're going to be converting back into Bitcoin or they're going to be dumping the tether for US dollars and devaluing that tether. So it, it's more of a tether problem, uh, you know, and, and, and problem for tether holders. Uh, as much as so much as it, it's problem or bearish for Bitcoin, I, I really don't see Tether. Even if it, it does get exposed, you know, people can slide out of the Tethers into other stable coins, uh, and or into Bitcoin. So I, I really don't see it being a problem for Bitcoin. Uh, I just if it was hugely hugely overdone, then the amount of inflows uh, would be somewhat affected versus what we've seen historically. But you know, again, large. The large investment crowd, the, the institutional guys, aren't really coming in and getting tethers. They're buying directly with fiat, right? So this doesn't really affect the big market moving forces behind the price of Bitcoin, I think. So that's just something to keep in mind, kind of clear up the FUD. Again, Tether, uh, they need to provide some kind of third-party audit to put this all to rest. I think the fact that they haven't or refuse to doesn't reflect well on the trustworthiness of the whole operation. But... I guess we'll we'll see we'll see what this lawsuit how things shake out and what what gets revealed if if anything new and we'll go from there so anyway guys i hope that helps and clarifies that issue uh, as always we appreciate your viewership please hit like and subscribe it really helps out our channel and i will see you on the next video take care guys bye, -bye. trade genius